what is our heading? <laughs> I'm Adventure Man Dan, a regular guy who's living life to the fullest. What I do, many think is crazy, but life is either a daring adventure or it's nothing at all. For years, I've taken every opportunity to explore around the globe. But now aboard my sailboat Adventureborn, I'm the master of my fate. So join me as I travel by the wind, play in the waves, harvest food from the depths, and teach those who sail with me aboard Adventureborn. We are having a bit of a lazy morning today, which I think we have earned. Maruzia, a bit of a busy, busy bee this morning. Some mission making crepes in a boat. Ooh. Thank you, Maruzia. Back. You want some cheese? It's like 11 or maybe almost noon, I don't know. We're about to motor out of here. Winds are coming up to just push us right in our direction along towards Hopetown. Forward! What is our heading? <laughs> All right, we'll work on it. Right. Lighthouse. No, the lighthouse is through land. We will sink if we go that way. Yeah. Our heading is that island up ahead, that rock island. Yeah. It's steering back back through. That is our heading just to the left of the island. Because you'll see on the chart, we got that shallow spot, and we got this island. We got to go around the corner. Cool. So Maru now has our heading. Sometimes the heading is. The heading on the compass. Sometimes, like at night, the heading might be some stars. But my favorite heading is uh, moving towards a landmass. So it's just in real time. You can always adjust to it instantly. Yeah, sailing is very technical and not easy to learn at first. But I feel like once you get the basics of it, you're good to go. Looking up at the sails has led to seeing some pretty cool meteorological events. Comment down below if you know what this is. Just took the jib down, but I'm trying to figure out what type of shark this is. This is, that looks like a nurse shark to me. Pretty big in the head. That's cool. Motoring into Hopetown, I was pretty nervous. I hadn't been there since Hurricane Dorian and wasn't sure what the state of the area was going to be. Much to my relief, the good people of Hopetown had gotten nearly everything rebuilt. All right. The mooring ball is here on a first come, first serve basis. Scooping up a mooring ball is pretty easy and only costs about $20 a night. Pretty easy in these conditions. So it's a bit of a tight mooring field in here. Several boats popped up just after we got in. Pretty gorgeous though. We take the dinghy and paddle on over. Go see my buddy Mike. I didn't yet have a motor, so I was going to be rowing. Made it. Now we got to see if I can still remember where my buddy lives. It is kind of nice to be back here though. And they've done a pretty good job of cleaning up. Ah, the Hopetown Clinic. The nice new roof. I was here last time when I got poison wood in my eyes. That was fun. This yellow bird. I was amazed what Mike had rebuilt. We caught up over dinner and met up again in the morning. So Charlie, where are we going? Tahiti High. Tahiti High. And what's Tahiti High? Um, Tahiti High. That what I shall we live. That's where Daddy is, isn't it? Yeah. And what's Daddy doing there? Building the bad room. He's building the house. Golf cart is the main way to get around Hopetown and throughout Elbow Key. The roads are small and there isn't far to go, so it's perfect for island life. But besides building his own house, 
Mike is also working on his own hotel and bed and breakfast. It's gonna be an eight room bed and breakfast. You gotta let me do a little tour of it later. Yeah, yeah. Continuing down, we got to the end of the island and the major building project Mike was working on. Aww. Aww. Walking up to the place, I could definitely see the potential here and the work. Mike had bought this house just after Doreen destroyed it and has been working away ever since to become his new family home. Go see Charlie's room. This is your room. Yeah, and this is my mama and dad's room. Mama and dad's room. And then right here is going to be the sink. The countertop will go straight through and be like a, like a bar counter. I love that. Mike is an absolute workhorse. But one walk up the stairs and anyone could easily see why he's going through all this. An incredible 270 degree ocean view for him and his whole family. I really have to tip my hat to this guy and what he's accomplished. This is incredible. You can see everything from up here. Though there's still much work to be done, I can't wait to return and see it completed. But next, we drove back to the bed and breakfast site. So this is what it looked like before. Yeah. So a lot has been taken away. So this is the sort of hotel Mike just bought. It's gonna be turning into a bed and breakfast. Super cool spot. So much was absolutely leveled by Hurricane Dorian, the single worst natural disaster to befall the Abacos ever. I'm amazed anything was left standing. But while I was enjoying this view, I realized I was not alone. <laughs> Get a little scared. And there he is. These Kestrel Falcons are fierce. I know I'm safe from the hawk down here. <laughs> I'm trying to leave. Oh, that was a good one. Oh, there we go. All right, you win, buddy. I'm out of here. Mike's house is right behind me. We're just gonna go for a little shore dive here. I'm gonna get some dinner. Mike and I kicked out a ways from the shore and started checking throughout the rocky reef. Unfortunately, there's about a million places for fish to hide throughout these rocks, making locating the right fish fairly difficult, but also pretty fun to get into the caves and ledges looking for that dinner. Eventually, I threw a flash rod ahead of us, hoping to attract something, which surprisingly brought out a couple of Nassau grouper. But we both thought the other spotted the fish first, and both told the other to go spear it. <laughs> so instead we each peeled off to one side, hoping to push the fish to the other. But it seemed luck was on my side as the fish moved closer to me. I knew I had to wait for the right moment to take the shot. I always try to grab a hold of the fish before I surface, just in case the shot doesn't hold. This further prevents losing any wounded fish. With a camera on my head, you can clearly see me checking my surroundings just in case of sharks. They're highly ambitious and aggressive here, but it was all good. I was hoping to push it back towards you, but it just, uh, yeah, it worked out. This one was coming to dinner. A perfect size for the four of us. Nah. Nah, as soon as you threw Yep. <laughs> Pretty nice, right? <laughs> yeah, let's try that again. Next we wanted to get Mike a fish. This one was super close and a little bit bigger than mine but I think we may have been a little too noisy when we darted over to try to find it. He 
Here I'm using my throat to croak and try to lure the grouper out, as well as checking every cave around, but it seemed no good. He knew what was up. There's a lot of places to hide in there. Let's move on. I was happy with this fair sized grouper, but it would have been nice for Mike to get a fish, and it would have been something for tomorrow or even the freezer if we had to. As we were swimming back, we noticed we weren't alone in the water. The sharks were here. Here you can see me removing the tip of my pole spear. This way I can jab the shark without doing any significant damage, but still enough to get the message across. This is my fish. Though usually, they know to stay just out of my range. The sharks in the Bahama are well known for harassing divers for their fish. Many people are too scared and just give away their fish, which, unless you're alone and surrounded, I believe is the wrong approach and teaches the sharks to always harass humans. These sharks are experts at swimming up from behind you and in your blind spots. A good reason to keep your head on a swivel especially when you're swimming back with a dead fish, which, to be honest, isn't the best plan anyway. It's far better to have some sort of way to get your kill out of the water to avoid these long, dicey swims. This was a bit hectic. Notice how lowered their pectoral fins are, and their fast, erratic motions. This is an obvious indicator of an aggressive shark behavior. This was the only hit I landed on the sharks that day. Moments after which, I thought I was up against 20 sharks. But it turned out to be a big school of tarpon. Super cool to see. Even though I had to stay alert since the sharks would actually try to hide in the school. Crazy. I think this is actually the first time I've joked with tarpon. An incredible fish, but I would never think of trying to spear one of these. First off, it's illegal. And secondly, it's not worth it from what I've heard about the quality of the meat but still very cool to free dive with. But there were the sharks again, still stalking me, waiting for their chance to take a swipe. They'd chase me all the way into the shallows of the shore, into less than knee deep water. But I didn't lose my fish. I was having it for dinner. persistent about me sized sharks on us on the way back in and uh, you end up having to prod one of them but uh, and then there was some tarpon and that's pretty much it. It was a pretty boring dive compared to how things can go but still a ton of fun and totally worth it. Then I cleaned and filleted the fish in the shallows of the bay, getting it ready for Mike to make something tasty with it. Mike's a bit of an expert when it comes to cooking fish and he makes it look so easy. Mike is making fish ricotta. Ooh. Oh, goodness me. Ah. And the kids are jumping for joy, aren't you? Jump, 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 jump. Fish piccata is pretty simple and very filling. First, cook the fish with a light coating of flour to give it that crisp. Then start on the sauce, consisting of lemon juice, butter, garlic, cream, and of course capers. Add a few laughs, stir evenly, then add the fish back in to meld all the flavors. Add a few laughs, best served over a bowl of angel hair pasta, and enjoy. 
But this meal was particularly good. A special combination of two simple ingredients. Winning the fight against the sharks and sharing with friends. Food always tastes better that way. Thanks for seeing this adventure through to the end. I hope you enjoyed it, learned something, or were inspired to choose your own lifestyle of adventure. Don't forget to press the like and subscribe button to see more videos like this and help support my channel. I post new videos as often as my chaotic lifestyle allows, but if you'd like to see more content now, check out my Facebook, Instagram, Patreon, and website for everything else or if you're interested in joining my crew aboard Adventureborn. See you on the next adventure!